Good morning and welcome to Nelson Creek Farm. I'm Farmer Dave and we're going to do a few little projects today around the farm while the weather is nice. Welcome everybody to Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. And despite all of the BS that's going on in Washington, D.C. today, we still love our country around here, so the flag's up, the gates are open, and it's going to be a good day to get a few projects done here at the farm. Since I've already loosened this uh, fuel line, and we have the new sediment bulb assembly here at the farm, we might as well get that changed out today so that uh, we can get the Super M farm all back into business. Uh, it's a 1952 model in case anybody's interested. Get that fuel line out of the way. And uh, let's see, what size does that take? A little bigger than a 916, so let's try, pardon my reach, a 5.8. And I remember right this was an oddball there was one side that was one size and something else on another and lacking the right size we will just put a vice grip on there and then screw that sediment bulb out of there and install the new one yeah there it goes and I fully expect to uh, get covered in gasoline doing this because uh, even though that valve is open and I've drained the tank I bet there's still some in there that'll come out when we unscrew this now somebody asked me why I don't just use an inline filter well I can but this thing also acts as a water trap and uh, yeah there isn't any water in it but it not only catches sediment that comes out of the tank, but it catches water. So, uh, yeah, these things are a good thing to have, on, especially on these old tractors. Well, let's see, I see a little, yeah, no, no gas in there. And no water in that sediment bulb either. It's just a clear glass bottom there. So, yeah, we'll get that replaced. Um, I am a little upset. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Oops, I'm dribbling. Down inside of there, there is some debris stuck in there. And you know what? I'm not going to reinstall that. I'm a little upset that I don't have it. But there is a um, filter that goes on the top of that. So I think what I'll do is, before we install the new one, I'm going to order... A little filter assembly that goes up on top of that to keep that stuff from getting down in there. Well, strike one today for getting the sediment bulb and the fuel filter system changed out on the Super M. Uh, I could go ahead and put in the new valve and the sediment bulb assembly that I've gotten that you saw in a previous video. Uh, but I'd really rather have that filter screen that sits in the top of that So I'm going to go and order that today and as soon as I get that then we'll finally put this thing together Top off the old Super M with some fuel and uh, fire her up and see how she's running in this cold weather I know it's a little hard to see but that right there is a raspberry plant There is another one right here down in those weeds and another one right there the reason I'm mentioning the raspberry plants today is because I spoke with 
my plant provider this morning who's willing to get me a few more I'm gonna need at least another eight or nine maybe ten plants from this nice lady to uh, finish out this row here behind me it uh, starts right here with this T post and runs over this way to where that other post is sitting there behind the side by side of course that big disc is going to get pulled out of the way and all this is going to get cleaned up this year we already have two rows of raspberries here where these other uh, ranch panels are these things here make excellent uh, yeah those make excellent uh, trellises for the uh, berry plants to climb on so we're going to kind of get this little area cleaned up and this will be the second year these plants will be here and hopefully they will do really well and we can get some water to them and uh, we'll have raspberries this year i'm out taking a little bit of a tour around the uh, farm today just to see uh, what all needs to be done yet this spring uh, you'll have to forgive this is in the shadows here but uh, there's a little piece of dirt right there that needs to be lowered and when i lower it i can fill in that canyon that water coming into the duck pond form and then we're going to put some uh, heavy l3 inch rock or so on there just to keep that from washing again uh, eventually that'll fill up with silt and whatnot uh, between the rock and it'll make a uh, sort of a driveway down here into the pond which if i turn around well <laughs> i don't know if you can see that anyway uh <coughs> We do have a little bit of moisture down here. There's the hop of finger. Uh, we've got a little bit of water that is frozen down here in the bottom of the pond. And if we need to increase the capacity, we may cut this bank back here at a little bit of a steeper angle, like on the other side over here where it's in the shade, and uh, see if we can't get a few more gallons of water in here. This could also stand to be lowered down oh, about a foot on this end, and maybe four or five inches down there where that buried bucket is, uh, there by that tumbleweed. That bucket is the uh, end support for the uh, uh, intake for the irrigation pump up there on top of the bank there so yeah that's what holds that up and keeps it up off the bottom of the uh, pond here not a real huge fan of willow trees because they do tend to make a mess uh, but this thing was actually just a little limb that had broken off of the green willow that's in the backyard and as you can tell the stalk is still a little bit green and so is the, this branch right there what i did was i found that that branch had broken off in a windstorm the night before i found it and i brought it out here and i stuck it in the mud next to the pond what i'm hoping is that this tree has rooted or will root and continue to grow and if it greens up and looks good this year we're going to transplant it and the first place I was thinking of transplanting it is from here where it sits over to that European ash. Um, I think it's an ash, European something or other. If that thing doesn't improve over the way it looked last year and it dies, uh, yeah, that thing's coming out and this willow tree is going to get uh, put in its place. Now this. European ash or whatever the devil it is might actually make it it does have a few leaf buds on the ends of some of its leaves or the stems but some of them don't have much of anything like right up here uh, this end here looks to be kind of dead but who knows maybe the thing will pull out of it this year and actually uh, do some good it did all right the first year um, but this last year it was looking a little peaked and I've talked to a couple people and some tell me it is too close to a constant water source and then other people say it's okay as long as the ground is well drained well only moisture getting in there is when I irrigate this area with sprinklers or it sends a root over here to the pond so we will see how that tree does this year now it's a European beach 
tree. That's what it is. It's a beech, yeah. Variegated uh, colored leaves, burgundy and green and maroon and all the other colors in between. I don't know that you can see them because it's in a shadow. So I'm trying to highlight it with the uh, shed and the skyline. The uh, cherry tree by the garage has started to get buds on it. Yeah, little leaf buds right in there. You see them little lumps? Yeah, so that thing is going to uh, be in bloom before too long if I don't quit hitting it with the camera. Yeah, so anyway, that's a sure sign that it's going to get warm up into the 50s and then we'll have a dead gum 20 degree frost and kill everything. That's usually the way it goes. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it has been a fairly eventful day today. Um, it's my one day off this week uh, that I can actually get something done around the farm. So I spent most of the day cleaning out the little storage shed that's in the driveway. I uh, got most of that taken care of today. There's probably another couple hours worth of work to do there. Um, hopefully, knock on some wood, we can get that done by Sunday if the weather is going to behave. It sounds like tomorrow is Thursday and we're going to be heading into a series of snowstorms. So anyway, um, yeah, while I was doing that, I did uh, get a few items dropped off by the post and UPS. Uh, first up, uh, yeah, it is the fuel shutoff valve for the Ford 850 tractor. It has a little thumb screw thing here where you can open it and close it, turn the fuel on and off. And it has a screen. I don't know if you can see that. That is a real super fine wire mesh screen on there. We need something like that for the fuel tank of the Super M Farmall to go on top of the sediment bulb. Only that part is very similar ex with the exception of a little brass end on it that is turned to fit down into the hole in the top of that. Uh, these screens are designed to keep uh, particles of whatever that should happen to fall into the gas tank uh, out of the uh, carburetor. So uh, yeah, this one right here, a little tweet. But yeah, that is for the Ford 850. So that is a welcome new part. Uh, that will go along with the new fuel tank that we have on the tractor. Or we will be putting on the tractor. And this might also be a Ford 850 part. Let me look here. If it is, it's in an awful big box for such a little part. And it is. A lot of bubble wrap. It's kind of like buying a thing of uh, potato chips in the little bags. Yeah, it's all air. Um, yeah. This is the fuel line for that tractor. I'm going to leave it in its protective wrapping. Uh, this piece attaches to... Let me get it back out of the box attaches here to the uh, fuel valve and then this bends and runs down over to the uh, carburetor so yeah that's how that all goes together and this thing I gotta buy some number 10 screws with 32 threads per inch about an inch long to put that in this like I said I'm gonna leave it in there for now keep it clean uh, I may have to get a different carburetor for that tractor. It's got a replacement one on it now. And whether or not it works, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. I know the engine does run with it. Um, I got something else in the mail today. Dad joke. Yes, it is a right here, actually. Dad joke. Um, I saw this on Flea Bay and couldn't resist. It, it is something for the uh, duck pond out here. I'm going to put this um, 
right near the pond somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where yet, but it is a sign. So, yeah, this is my dad joke for the day is a beware of shark sign to be put near the duck pond. Um, <laughs> actually, you got to be more cautious of the great Idaho salamanders that float around in that thing. They look like miniature alligators with a short stubby nose. So, yeah, anyway, that's a little bit of humor for today. Um, I did hear a joke that uh, Pete did the other day, the guy I've mentioned before, uh, that has done um, some dad jokes. Blonde walks into a bar, sits down, has a few drinks. Bartender asks her, what's the matter? She says, I'm contemplating why I only have three sisters, but my brother has four. She couldn't figure it out either. Anyway, um, that's going to wrap up this little short, super short video today. Um, been working this week, so it's cold, nasty outside. We are going to push ahead and do the uh, flea market and arts and craft show that will be coming up on the fifth weekend. I thought it was the fourth Saturday. We actually have five in the month of May this year. So that'll be coming up on the 29th of May. We're still looking forward to it. Um, talk to some more people about coming down and participating. Getting a real positive uh, feedback on this deal. People are getting tired of being in the house because of the COVID thing. They're wanting to get out and do something. So, yeah. If you want to participate, please leave me a message in the comment section right down there at the bottom of that. And as always, don't forget to click on the little red thing right over there. It says subscribe in white letters on it. Click the little bell icon right next to it and click the word all. That way you can get notified every time there's another one of these videos out. I just had a uh, knock at the door. You can kind of see what the package looks like. Uh, not entirely too crazy about this. It is what I think it is. I just ordered this the other day because I was a little bit upset with the uh, tire shops in town. None of them having a pair of 600 by 16 inner tubes uh, to put the tires and wheels back on that 850 Ford tractor. I kind of need it. So um, I'm going to check these out real quick. And uh, apparently the mailman had forgot to drop these off earlier and uh, brought them back by tonight. Uh, yeah, that one looks okay. And uh, yeah, about the same. So anyway, uh, I know you didn't see what I was looking at probably, but uh, yeah pair of inner tubes putting those uh, tires and mount them on the wheels. So, yeah, we'll have a roller going here before too long. Anyway, uh, yeah, looks like starting about the second week in February, our daytime highs will start being consistently above 40 degrees or higher. Uh, so hopefully, and it's been a mild winter, Knock on wood again, we will be getting into doing some field work in February. So, fingers crossed, lucky rabbit's foot, all that kind of thing. And what else we got going on? Oh, yeah, there may be another piece of equipment show up here at the farm that we will be using before too long with any luck. So, stay tuned for that as well. Uh, in the meantime, check us out on the uh, Facebook group or the page, Nelson Creek Farms. Um, might leave the group going for now. Uh, the page is going to be more business orientated. So yeah, uh, until we get produce going and whatnot, that page isn't going to be doing too much, but then all of the sales of whatever is going to be there, not on the group. So anyway, when something gets right, watch the page and you'll find out what we got. Anyway, Farmer Dave, catching you later. Why, well, it's a lucky little finger. <laughs> See you now.